We go now to Mr. No. You are recognized, Mr. No, for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Raskin, Ranking Member Jordan, and committee members. I'm a journalist who reports on American political violence. By speaking to you today, I'm putting my life in my own hands. For years, I've been the victim of hundreds of threats by Antifa extremists. They threatened to kill me. They spread lies about me being a fascist, a neo-Nazi, even a terrorist. They showed up to my family's home in the middle of the night. And they nearly killed me when they beat me in broad daylight within view of the police in the middle of downtown Portland last year. I spent 30 hours in hospital as my brain bled from subarachnoid hemorrhage. This past week, Murder Andy Ngo was written on a large wall in downtown Portland next to the Antifa slogan, ACAB, All Cops are Bastards. I received more threats when it was announced that I would be speaking to this committee. I am in fear, but the truth is too important to remain silent. I've seen the photos of the injuries sustained by my co-panelists. They're absolutely horrific. Their complaints must be taken seriously and properly investigated. However, it is incomplete to focus on injuries perpetuated by law enforcement during the past month of riots without examining the violent extremists like Antifa and others who instigate and carry out violence from the cover of peaceful demonstrations. From coast to coast, American cities have been convulsed with riots that have now claimed dozens of lives, injured hundreds, and caused countless millions in damages. Over-policing did not cause this. Violent extremists and criminals did. In Portland, Oregon, where I do most of my reporting, violent protests have continued for more than 30 days. Like in many cities, law enforcement here is routinely demonized by the public and elected officials. I reported earlier this year for Newsweek about how the mainstreaming of police hatred in Portland has created a culture of passive policing and a tolerance of criminal mob behavior. On the evening of the 29th of May, 2020, violent rioting spread to Portland. After rioters stormed and set fire to the ground floor of the Justice Center, which houses the Central Police Precinct and the Sheriff's Office, they turned their rage to downtown businesses. Many were opportunists looking to carry out carnage. But I also saw Antifa militants dressed in their black uniforms, taking a leadership role in smashing windows and breaking into windows so that looters could pillage. In a span of five hours, they destroyed countless businesses and started fires with impunity. You could hear the distant sirens of the police, but no one would show up. Police in Portland and elsewhere have sustained serious injuries from rocks, concrete chunks, IEDs, and more. The weapons Antifa extremists use are intentionally designed to be deceptive to legal observers, media, and those around them. For example, projectiles that may look like water balloons are actually filled with paint and used to blind police before they're pelted with rocks. Umbrellas are fastened with discreet pocket knives at the end. Projectiles that look like plastic water bottles are actually frozen solid. Innocuous looking handheld lasers are shined in an officer's eyes before someone with a slingshot aims ball bearings at his face. In New York- hey, Candace. In New York, nearly 400 officers in a two week period. 150 local and federal officers were injured in Washington DC in a week. Police have been shot and killed elsewhere. I've seen with my own eyes how Antifa and other violent extremists use peaceful protests to carry out acts of wanton violence against property, law enforcement, and citizens. When I was undercover in Seattle's so-called autonomous zone, which was inhabited by many Antifa, I received manuals and booklets providing instructions on how to use protesters as human shields and cover. These are organized and committed violent extremists who look to destabilize the country. They are trained to use encrypted means of communication to hide their trail. Those who get injured or arrested are regular protesters and even journalists. Antifa melt away into the black wall. The First Amendment is paramount. The street protests must be constrained by the rule of law. 
Law enforcement play one of the most important roles in keeping demonstrations safe. We've seen how this can work. During protests in DC at the end of last month, self-described Antifa Legba Karafor was recorded in a viral video hammering chunks off the street to throw at police. Peaceful protesters made a citizen's arrest and handed him over to law enforcement. He's been charged. George Floyd deserves justice, but so do countless Americans, journalists, and others victimized by militant extremists who use us as human shields.